Hongera KXP. I, I congratulate you for the good job. We applaud KXP for taking up this mantle. Very well done. Keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations, KXP. Congratulations to everybody involved. Congratulations and well done to this. Hongera KXP. Congratulations to Fiona, all of her team, uh, and to Tesbok and KXP on this, this great anniversary. Congratulations to the board of um, Tesbok and uh, KXP. Tesfoc established in 1999 was set up initially to put in place a Kenya Internet Exchange Point. We are proud to celebrate the services of the Kenya Internet Exchange Point that is owned by the community, run by the community and really a service for Kenyans to ensure that Kenyans are able to keep their traffic local. The history of KAXP is a, is a very interesting one because it spans the whole evolution of technology and, and the internet in, in Kenya. 1996, Kenya as a country uh, got our first digital internet connection. So the way things were when internet was new in Kenya, we used to get our bandwidth from JamboNet. The cost to go via Telcom Kenya's satellite earth station on your own, as opposed to going through JamboNet, was, there was a big difference. It cost an arm, two legs, and all your fingers, if I could put it that way. It was so, so expensive buying bandwidth. We were paying $30,000 a month for a 64 kilobit international connection. If you, if you multiply that up, it comes to something like $600,000 per megabit per month. Um, which, which is quite remarkable if you compare it to where we are today. We were in a situation where all of the connectivity in Kenya was on satellite. There was no submarine fibre in the country yet. We were using satellite technology uh, to establish international lease lines to internet service providers in other markets out of which we would now connect into the global internet. There was no service provider, no ISP that had uh, their primary servers residing in, in the country. Everybody had their servers out in the US. An email from a subscriber on ISP Kenya would literally have to go into Europe and sometimes Europe and Asia before coming back to a recipient on the other side of uh, Nairobi. We didn't have local mail servers. We didn't have a local exchange. So all those emails went where the service provider stored, or rather kept the mail servers. And that's how Testbook was formed. It became an association of ISPs to be able to lobby for our interests. Testbook has represented uh, Kenya in international forums, whether it's on ICANN, whether it's on AFPIF, whether it's on exchange um, conferences. They've really represented the country because they represent all stakeholders, not a few individual interests. At the same time as we're lobbying government for reforms around the international gateways and other things, let's also see if we can optimize our operations by setting up an internet exchange point. An exchange point is about people coming together to exchange their traffic. And despite that, the fact that most of the people then were competitive rivals, they saw the need and they came together and they were able to achieve something that has grown in leaps and bounds. And the original idea was that it was, a, um, it was purely for the operators um, so that we could um, manage the, the, the politics of setting it up. A few of us got together and uh, put a switch somewhere, got some premise uh, and started and, and put up links to the exchange point. Um, we, we didn't really know each other very well. It was a highly competitive business. Um, there, there was no history of liberalized private sector operators here. And, and so it was an opportunity for us to get to know each other. And the, the single reason why we got together was that we said, let's create a, a Kenyan internet exchange point. Challenges that we faced was that one, not all service providers were ready to jump in. 
immediately. The other challenge was that the government didn't think this was a good idea. We started operating and then uh, we received a letter from what was then called CCK uh, asking us to stop and I believe it was around our licensing. That license was not coming, was not forthcoming. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I think there's a letter we're, we're still looking for that came to say that we need to shut down the exchange point. So next thing we knew, we received a group of very angry looking people from CCK who demanded immediate closure and shutdown of KIXP. So for almost a whole year, we, could, we couldn't operate. Exchange point couldn't do anything. But we lobbied, went to court, did whatever we could, and eventually we were able to. We then went through 18 months of a very bitter public um, uh, argument about why the exchange should be set up, why um, it shouldn't be closed down, and, and, and why it couldn't become some sort of a, a, a state or, or telecom Kenya monopoly. When CCK went to Telecom Kenya, after we really complained for two years, that there was no local exchange. Telecom was not saying the truth. When they found that the same jumbo net switch uh, and router was the same one that was being said it was for KIXP, they gave us that license. And from there, things started going from strength to strength. And it's a, a credit to all the people who were involved in that, that story that it, it wasn't just the, the few ISPs who were involved. It was actually the entire IT community. KIXP became the first internet exchange point in the world to require an internet, uh, a, 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 an operating license. Liberalization is not something which comes easily and, and there was a, a, a huge risk at the time that if we didn't fight to open the market and liberalize the market, then it would simply move from um, mobile operators uh, belonging to vested interests to data communications belonging to vested interests and really nothing would change. And so Fight for something that's right and that something is important and you have bumps along the way but when you finally get there and you see that everyone is benefiting and you know the fact that let's not forget there were many international uh, organizations who supported this initiative, who gave us equipment, who realized that this was a, a, a fundamental building block of the internet in Kenya. So exciting to be able to just see our traffic all of a sudden moving and optimizing and we saw an immediate drop in the traffic levels. A year into the KXP and I think it probably didn't do more than 10 megabytes of uh, traffic. Today it's doing 60 gigabytes of traffic and growing. We no longer have to buy that expensive bandwidth. It improved services. It improved collaboration um, amongst industry players. We've been able to offer our customers a better experience on our network. They are able to experience faster speeds and we've also been able to reduce the cost of connectivity in general. And global giants, companies like Microsoft, companies like Amazon, uh, Netflix, you know, these, these are the large companies that are coming to, uh, coming to Kenya, they're coming to connect to networks here, but uh, you know, a big piece in, in what's drawing them here is the KIXP. So I think a lot of the benefits that Kenyans enjoy today in terms of ubiquitous internet access, fast internet access, great customer service was brought by KIXP. The Kenya government has done a very good job with embracing technology, a lot of the e-citizen type services. If all of that sat overseas or had to go overseas to come back to get to those services, lots of people wouldn't use them because it would just be too slow and too expensive. We joined KXP in 2014. We pair with them at uh, the East African Data Center and this has been able to give good value to the services that we provide to our customers as well. It also made great savings, uh, you know, great cost savings for the ISPs. The market was liberalized and the market had to, had to be open for all, not restricted to a, to a few um, vested interests or, or dominant players. Some of the big achievements or milestones also we had, the introduction of the GRX, uh, which was meant to provide a platform for, for voice traffic exchange within the region. And this was mainly again to, call, to kind of uh, deal with the uh, exorbitant uh, roaming rates. 
you will find a circular saying voice of IP is illegal. What we did is we told people they can actually use it, but not their ISP. So people brought in their modems, they started using the service, and it was up to you and the telecom to go find who was using VoIP. Initially, KXP had been registered as a separate company, but when I came on board, I was asked to run it as a business service offered by Tespoc. And we have, we have maintained KXP's corporate, individual corporate status as we have moved along. Because of the growth, um, in, in peering because the growth in numbers who are joining KAXP we've seen that you know, global, global companies have started to come to Kenya they've started to invest in putting in their network equipment into Kenya Today it's doing 60 gigabytes of traffic and growing and of course when you're accessing local sites when you're accessing local services you're no longer going abroad By June 2020 we actually had a migration from 1G to 10G ports for 15 members and within the first year of the pandemic I'm happy to announce that we actually had 15 new members which grew to 34 new members within the second year. Our goal and our dream is to hit a terabyte of data at the exchange and I think we will be there sooner than we may uh, be considering. The first year of the pandemic saw us having an increase of 190 195% and as far as traffic is actually concerned, which translated to a further growth of 230% in the second year. There's been a lot of uptake today of 100 gig ports. Initially, we, had, we sold our ports in KBPSs. We've moved from KBPSs. We now have, we, we went to the megabyte port size. Today, we've got uh, one gig ports for the small, very, very small operators, but we start from 10 gigs. The exchange point and the people around it didn't only help Kenya, they actually helped Africa in the region. So really, where is the future from, from here? Uh, the internet will get faster, uh, the exchange points will get more efficient. From 60 GB, I think we're looking at probably terabytes that will be trans transcending or, or transacting in the local exchange points. I am extremely delighted to announce that Facebook and Netflix We'll be taking up the 100G ports at the KXP and definitely looking towards growing this particular segment to a much greater level of attribute within the Kenyan space. Most importantly, keen to ensure that everyone within the KXP ecosystem understands that we remain very ambitious and are keen to ensure that we have this particular space thriving for businesses to be able to unlock their full potential in Kenya. KXP has undertaken a very long journey to get to where it is today. When we look at the number of members, 68 members PRE, and the traffic, 58 gigs of traffic, those are major milestones we have achieved for ourselves. And it is my hope that we will only get better. As the KXP marks their second decade of existence and moves into their third decade, we are looking at trying to ensure that more members get and drop onto the bandwagon as we're looking at rolling out the 100G ports and more importantly to ensure that we can actually have a very sustainable environment to operate within Kenya and not only within Kenya but the region as a whole. The future is bright and I know for a fact that uh, the setup and the running of the KXP has been uh, a template that has been used regionally uh, by other African countries to set up their own internet exchange points. It wasn't individuals, it was an entire community who got together and and that's that's really important and that that sort of shows the importance of not-for-profit organizations because because they do so much more than just the things they were set up to do. KXP can be the hub of internet connectivity for Africa. Congratulations to KXP. Uh, we are very 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 proud of you and we will continue to watch and support you as much as possible to ensure that this sector continues to grow.